Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo. Welcome to Kalamazoo Lively Arts, the show that takes you inside Kalamazoo's vibrant creative community and explores the people who breathe life into the arts. I'm Mariano Avila, here at the Miller Auditorium. For today's episode, we spend some time in Grand Rapids for the largest art competition in the world, Art Prize. Artists travel from across the globe and converge in the city for three weeks in hopes of taking home the grand prize. We visit artists with roots in Kalamazoo and see how they were inspired to create and compete. My gosh, we have got ourselves an Art Prize 10 exhibit thanks to you and your talents, Jim Treisenberg. What is the name of this exhibit? Well, this thing is called the Marvelous Musical Scientific Sight and Sound Machine. Quite a mouthful, but that's its name. <laughs> What's its intent? What do you want it to do? Well, I want to show like the fusion of science and art. It comes from like steam, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math meets steampunk. Steampunk being that mad scientist, 1890s steam engine looking kind of kind of artwork. So steam meets steampunk in this marvelous musical scientific sight and sound machine. So you can see art as well as experience and learn scientific things while playing with it. I am so ready to play with your art prize entry. What do you want to show us? Well, let me show you the Gobbler Electric. That's everybody's favorite. So you take this horn ball like here, it's like from a bike horn. Okay. You squeeze the horn like a bike horn, and then look at the turkey up on the, um, up on the stand there. And then it goes, and then it's like making the turkey noise, it lights up, and it spins back and forth. It'll do that a couple times, then the lights will shut off. See? And then, okay, let me try it. Here, ready? One, two, three. A good squeeze. There you go. There he is, Tom the turkey. Yeah, Tom the turkey. The gobbler electric is what I call it. <laughs> when I was a kid, we had one of these in the kitchen on the wall with a six foot cord. But now this one here, when you dial the phone, it rings the jingle bells. So give it a try, dial the jingle bells, play the jingle bells. Isn't that cool? I just played the jingle bells. How did this idea come to you? Well, several years ago, I had a project here at the same venue, First Park Congregational Church, called the Dinozar, which was a bike with everything on it, everything imaginable on it, that took me 30 years to build. and. It was a hit here. Kids loved it, adults loved it, but they were always agonized because they wanted to like touch it and I had it like roped off and be like, ah, oh, don't touch. So seeing them wanting to touch it, like because I had like spinning wheels and robotic animals and blinking lights and all kinds of stuff, but they couldn't touch it. So I thought, I need something that they have to touch. So this thing is very interactive. If you don't touch it, it just sits there. It begs participation, interaction, playing with it, interacting with it to make it work. I'm now ready to mix the rainbow. Come mix on over here. Yep. See, everything on this exhibit or creation has a science lesson to it. And this one's is the three primary colors make any color in the rainbow. So when you turn these dials here, it adjusts the brightness of each of the colors of LEDs so you can mix them and make any color you want. So all colors are made from red, green, and blue. And that way kids can play with this and see how to make any color by mixing the three primary colors. Tell me about this. Well, I call this the oscilloscopic TV voice viewer. Uh, probably a lot of kids won't know what the old vacuum tube TVs are or how they work. But with this one, I took one and converted it into like an oscilloscope that lets you see your voice. The purer the tone, ooh, the rounder and cleaner the circle is on there. So you can experiment making patterns with sound on your TV. This opportunity to participate in Art Prize, what's it like for you? Oh, it's fun. It's um, This is the second time I've done it. Like I said, I had that bike a few years ago here. And it's just fun to um, uh, be part of this whole citywide 
extravaganza, I guess. <laughs> and um, to be an artist, you feel like you're you're more part of it. And right now, this piece is in the top 25 of the time-based category. And that kind of looks kind of cool to see your thing on the website, Art Prize website, top 25, you know. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of cool. So it's just, yeah, it's just, it's fun. It's a chance to let people see your work and what you do and everything. And it's just, I love Art Prize. It's always a highlight of my year. Next, we move to this device, please. Yep, this is the steam machine. The whole idea of this thing is steam, science, technology, engineering, art, math, and all done up in the steampunk style, the old mad scientist steam engine look. So you push the steam machine here, it comes to life. The hourglass flips over. You see the steam coming out of the steam boiler there and the lightning discs going, and it's like a time machine, the time going by, and the steam governor going, the steam engine piston going down there, and old eight millimeter movie reel, anybody remembers those, <laughs> uh, going there, vacuum tubes, and the bubble tube there. So the whole thing comes to life, and when the hourglass runs out is when it shuts off. Photonic xyloharp. What's this all about? Well, the photonic xyloharp means it uses light photons, photonic, xylo, like xylophone, and then harp, you play it like a harp. So, made up the word photonic xyloharp, you break a light beam, and that activates the circuit, which activates the solenoid, which activates the um, hammers or mallets on the xylophone to play a song. So, as you can see here, put your hand in, break the light beam, activates the hammer. Go ahead, try it. Okay, boom. There we go. You can play it two-handed too. So whenever you break a light beam, it will activate the, the xylophone. How so, cool is this? Oh, this is just awesome. And I, I had fun building it, but I think I almost had more fun watching kids, both young kids and old kids, interacting and playing with it. So, yeah. All right, I'm gonna go play with that turkey again. I'll play with the turkey. The Gobbler Electric is everybody's favorite. Yet another Kalamazoo artist that brings his talent to Art Prize 10. Wow, what did you make for us? This is, um, I titled it Origami Bonsai. Um, so it's a bonsai tree that I made out of wire, um, lots and lots of wire and lots and lots of paper. Yes. Because that's what you do. That's usually what I do. I like to um, use a lot of origami in my art, um, a lot of paper arts, yeah. I understand somewhere there's a hidden figure, or you're gonna tell me a hidden secret, something to do with your work. Yeah, um, like I said, I kind of wanted this to be a piece where someone could just, you know, come in and look at for a while um, and just feel at peace. So I kind of hid something in there where you have, where you can't just pass by it to see it. But he's right up there. There's a little, a little something. Owl in there. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. It's an owl. Mm -hmm secret and how does the trunk work so the trunk is um, it's all wire that's been coiled and wrapped together to give it stability um, and then from there so these are all continuous pieces of wire from the bottom all the way through the tips of the, um, the branches why pink uh, the pink just really represents all the feminine energies in my life right now um, my fiance is pregnant with our second daughter, um, so I'm kind of getting overtaken in the, the home place with feminine energies. Um, my mother, of course, is a huge, huge impact on my on myself as a person and just artistically. She's been very supportive. Um, yeah, and just with what's going on today, um, it's good to have just support, showing support for for you know Madam Feminine. Let's, let's have you talk about uh, the placement, your foundation here. With the art of bonsai, um, it's basically where you prune uh, a tree to keep its full grown shape, um, but just be smaller. And most of the time they'll grow those in, in pots to keep them, uh, keep them smaller. Um, and so I made this tray to keep it in 
and then I have it um, packed with, with live moss here um, just to add kind of that opposition of the live. So you've had to come back and water. I have. Yep, every week I come back and uh, mist it a little bit, but that keeps it nice and green as well. How's Art Prize? Well, how is it to be an Art Prize artist? Oh, it's been it's been really good. It's been really neat seeing different artists and making friends with different artists, um, and just seeing people see my piece and and smiling or or you know hearing stories about other kids that are doing origami. Um, it's just really neat connecting with people. This is a great place to do it. And tell that little princess that this one's for her? Oh, she already knows. <laughs>
a big part of my income and also um, my past art has been photography that I've had an art prize and I've done pottery more as um, for self-fulfilling purposes so it's more relaxing meditative for me um, so because this piece is so personal and it, the message is so personally connected to my inside thoughts um, I wanted to use a medium that was more for myself versus something I would sell to the public. Here we are with the Kalamazoo affiliated artist, Brittany Rudd in the house. What beautiful work you've done. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So describe your work. Okay, it is a white charcoal uh, collection of works, um, animals around the world, basically every, all of my favorite animals from each continent around the world. So it's been really exciting to have it here. Tell me about the medium and why the medium. Okay. It is white charcoal on black paper. It is a little bit easier for me than black charcoal on white paper because you just do the highlights. You let those shadows speak for themselves. So take me through how this idea becomes an art prize entry. Well, this year it was actually a whim. Um, I've been an art prize before and I wasn't planning on doing it again. Um, and then it kind of popped up on social media like, hey, this is the last day to be an art prize. This is the last day to register as an artist. And I said, well, I have a collection I'm working on. Let's just take a chance and see if I'm in it. So. And you're in it, and here we are at the Bob, and thank goodness uh, Kalamazoo is strongly represented by you. Let's take apart this elephant. Uh, this was actually a gift from my dad a year and a half ago. This is what started the whole thing. Um, he loves elephants, and I, I don't know, every time I see an elephant, I think of him. So I, this is my first white charcoal on black paper piece. Um, and it just kind of inspired the rest. So what do you start with? Uh, do you, do you, does an elephant pose for you here, Brittany? No, absolutely <laughs> not. Um, I actually look up different references, pictures that I've taken at the zoo, uh, stuff that people post online, and I kind of just study the animal first and then just kind of put it in a piece. Do you sketch and then fill in the blank or do you get right into your charcoal? I actually, for white charcoal, I kind of squint at the picture a little bit and just draw the highlights. So it's kind of like a, a bunch of little tiny shapes that kind of form the big piece after all. Describe another one. You've got a zebra to your left, yeah. right? Talk yeah. about that. Zebra? Uh, she is, I don't know, I like it's a zebras. She? It's a she. Yes, she it's is. a she. Yes. <laughs> um, she is. I don't know, one of my favorites, just because she's posed a little differently. It's not necessarily a portrait of an animal. It's kind of more realistic, something you'd see in the wild, so. Tell me about the experience that you're going through here at Art Prize 10. It is exciting. It's really exciting watching people come up and look at your art. It's fun seeing other people's art. It's very inspiring to see how many different people with different versions of art will come together in one big event. So it's, it's really cool. What will happen with your work after you've displayed here? Well, the elephant will go back to my dad, because I borrowed it from him. Um, and the rest are for sale individually. Is that a little mouse up there I see? Yes. That might be my favorite. <laughs> Congratulations, Brittany Rudd. Thank you. Thank you very much. bet as a little girl you like mermaids. Is that what this piece is all about? Yes, well I've actually always had an affinity for water. I've always loved swimming like when I went to camp. Um, it was always, uh, I had the, the highest level of being able to go out the farthest into the lake. Uh, water has always been very, very dear to my heart and uh, that was one of the reasons why I chose to do the, the Mermaid Symphony this year. What's the takeaway message? Which, what do you want me to talk about after I've seen your good work? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the, the piece, as you can see, is kind of fractured. Uh, they look like they were happy, but you know everything is kind of disjointed now. And it's kind of uh, all the pollution that has been going in the water, the plastic waste, uh, all that kind of stuff. There's like 
literally islands of plastic waste in the oceans and the seas. You go swimming in a lake and you've got little bottles floating by you. And it, I just am so in love with water and being able to swim, but then you go out and then you run into all this nasty stuff and it's just kind of really disheartening. So I want people to realize when you throw away plastic bottles like into the street or just other random things, you, you think that you're getting rid of it. No, it goes into the gutters, it goes into the draining system, which goes into our rivers, into our lakes, into our oceans, and um, the environmental impact is, is really disheartening. So how did you actually make it? What's, uh, we've got some marble, we've got some, yeah, painting. Uh, well, actually, um, it's not paint, it's oil pastels. So uh, oil pastel crayon sat there, smudged it together, did the whole piece, uh, two large pieces of paper, and then uh, ripped it up and reapplied it to get the mosaic effect. Um, and then the, the flat marbles are for the bubbles, but also in a way it, it symbolizes some of the, the extra waste that's floating in what would have been an otherwise smooth surface. Do you come into an art prize, and I know this isn't your first rodeo, hoping to win? No, I mean, I want people to see and enjoy my art, appreciate it, the message that it has, and just the, the simple beauty of it, because I want uh, people to come away actually feeling something when they saw it. Back to the process. Do you sketch this first? Do you have dreams at night about what this is going to be? How much does it morph into what it is? Huh? Well, I always start with like a basic idea but nothing ever turns out exactly like what I had envisioned. I don't know if that's just me or just an artist thing, but I come out with like a basic idea of what I want and then as I start coloring it and then, especially when I rip it up and reapply it, like it started out going in one direction and then it curved into another and I just let it do what it, what it did. Tell me more about you and your art. Um, all my art always focuses on the flow of things, like uh, the, the feeling and the flow of energy, water, emotions. Um, sometimes I do small. I mean, for Art Prize, obviously, I, I did. You go big. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, for Art Prize, you need to go big or go home. <laughs> But yeah, uh, no, I always focus on, on the flow of things and I have a few different styles. It's always contemporary or, or abstract feel to it. Can you sing that little mermaid song? Doesn't there be a song that goes? Uh, Ariel, oh my God. I don't want to be on recording trying to sing that. I, I can tell you how many times I tried to sing that when I was younger and Ariel was actually my favorite Disney character. I had my hair uh, bright red a couple years ago. It's pink now, but I was just like, yay, Ariel. Now I just need a mermaid tail. Art Price 10 in the books for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Kalamazoo Lively Arts. Check out today's show and other content at WGVU.org. We leave you tonight with a performance from this summer's For the Good Open Mic Night. I'm Mariano Avila, and have a great night. Was it all a dream? Seven all the fiends. Four hustlers in the lack, only 15. Riding fresh out of mall, money ain't a thing. Black flag in my hand, bang on enemies. What I get to live a life, young, wild, and free. What I get to never ever say RIP. Long live Marquee, Twins, Jamal, and Beasy. Promise that you are forever more than memories. Pockets swore it's on froze. Expensive clothes, foreign oh Step on toes. With big bank grows Every night I'm with the bros That's just how it goes This little thing of us is family Yeah When losing y'all I lost the bet of me Yeah And now I'm driving to insanity Yeah Hope on the way I put my mind at ease I'm running late Running out of place But I'm still running the race Trying to pick up the pace But I'm growing faint Always overthink I don't know no other way But to one day run away I'm running late Running out of place, but I'm still running a race Trying to pick up the pace, but I'm growing faint Always overthink, I don't know no other way So one day run away, I really hate to pick the phone up, yeah Might get that call, something wrong with her, yeah My niece died of pneumonia, yeah So now I'm going sick on anyone, yeah What kind of guy kills a four-year-old, yeah Don't wanna hear it, that's a load of bull <coughs>
telling stories every talk told, yeah. The more I grow, the more my heart get cold, yeah. I just might pop these Zannies, mix it up with the Eddies, yeah. Then it all with Henny, overload system crashing, yeah. Trying my best to manage. I like to demand it. I need my grands and granny. All the ones used to hear me. This little thing of us was family, yeah. We're losing y'all, I lost a bet of me, yeah. And now I'm driving to insanity, yeah. Hope on the way up, put my mind at ease. I'm running late, running out of place, but I'm still running a race. Trying to pick up the pace, but I'm growing faint. Always overthink, I don't know no other way, but to one day run away, I'm running late. Running out of place, but I'm still running a race Trying to pick up the pace, but I'm growing faint Always overthink, I don't know no other way So when they run away, I'm Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo.